I've worked it out why I'm the last person to speak. There is ageism working here. <laughs> but it is also because, as he says, he doesn't want to say I'm a loud mouth. He says I'm an outgoing person. <laughs> South Africans are often accused of believing that there are exceptions. Of course we are exceptions. Show me a constitutional democracy that can tolerate system failure such as we have in education, in health, in safety and security, and in employment creation. Not for one year, 18 years and counting. You've got to give it to us. <laughs> but we have a competitor. <laughs> this beautiful cruise ship ended on the rocks like our education system, which is on the rocks. But the sad part of our education system is we inherited it knowing it had a fatal design flaw. But our government officials quickly jumped into the control room, put a few patches on the leaky engine, and started partying within the tripartite alliance with none other than the teachers' union, said. They also took to the floor with fancy curriculum footwork. <laughs> and as if that was not enough, they covered up any sign of failure with lower standards. But how did you and I allow it to happen? We as citizens of this constitutional democracy are complicit. We have chosen to remain silent because white South Africans feel they cannot talk because they'll be called racist. Black South Africans say they can't talk because they will be regarded as counter-revolutionaries. And so 80% of our children, if you look at that, and teachers are underwater. We send the occasional rescue lifeboat and we get a few out, as many of you have been saying. But we need more than just simply lifeboats. We need a revolution. And that revolution is going to be led by you and I linking hands, acknowledging our wounds, and forming healing circles that are going to really make this country the success it is destined to be. And that success in the education arena has to start there, putting our children at the center of our concerns. Making sure that from the cradle to career, our children are surrounded by love, care, and support. That every three-year-old starts early childhood development. That when they do go to school, they will be treated as the individuals they are. And that our schools deserve the name school from toilets to information technology, because these are precious, precious children. But we also need instructional leadership that is visible and felt, making sure that every teacher is competent 
and performs at the very highest standard. And we are not going to tolerate any drivers without licenses. And they have to be renewed regularly to make sure our children are safe. But we also need to make sure that our curriculum is not a one-size-fits-all. Let's learn from Germany, from Switzerland, where they bifurcate at grade 10. Kids can become really expressive if they are given to drama, to fine arts, to music, to engineering, to anything they like. They are the people whose interests we need to be serving, whose talents we need to be developing. But we also need to do something else. We need to recruit our best graduates from the very failing higher education system. There are successes. Let's get those young people to give two years of their lives teaching for South Africa. And that would put us on a very, very high note. But we have work to do. We have allowed four million young people not in school, not in training, not in employment, to lose hope. We have to go back and give them a second chance. And to do that, the resources have to come from shutting down the CETAs. Because those CETAs are absorbing no less than five billion a year, which should be going into artisan training, apprenticeship systems that used to generate, during the apartheid era, 30,000 artisans a year. Now, less than 10,000 actually graduate. But alongside this unemployment, 800,000 vacancies. Let's just do it to make our economy work again. The transformative agents of this country are you and I as citizens, as parents, as the corporate sector, we have to stand up and demand good service, good governance from those who are serving us as the citizens of this country. I thank you.